So, number one, identities are equations that are true for all values. And you've talked about identities, um, if you remember, uh, your whole mathematical career you talked about, about identities. The identity, um, like addition identity is one plus zero. Multiplication I or, or is the number plus zero because it always comes out to be the number. And the multiplication identity is times one because eight times one is eight and nine times one is nine. And so those are your identities. So we talk about trig identities a lot. They're equations that are true no matter what value you plug in. Um, examples of other identities would be if I do x plus y squared, it's the same thing as x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. It doesn't matter what two values I plug in for x or y, it's always going to come out to be that. So if I had x plus 3, it's still going to be x squared plus 2 times xy plus y squared. Um, same thing if I put 2 times x plus 3, that's the same thing as 2x plus 6. It's the same no matter what values you plug in. So that's why we call them identities. So that you'll hear in trig, we talk about trig identities a lot, because there's a lot of them. So the first group of identities that we're going to talk about are the reciprocal identities. So quick reminder. The reciprocal of a non-zero number x is 1 over x. So for example, non-zero number 2, the reciprocal of 2 is 1 half. If they give you a fraction to start with, the reciprocal of 3 fourths is 4 thirds. But there is no reciprocal for 0 so sad. Because 1 over 0 is undefined. It doesn't get a reciprocal. So calculators have a reciprocal key. It is. It is labeled. It's labeled as x to the negative 1. Where is it on here? I don't ever use it, clearly. Is it on the right column? Oh, there it is. Yes, right below math. It's labeled as x to the negative 1. So, If we put in, ooh. so if I were to put in these two that I did, two, and I hit that reciprocal key, which is right below math, if I hit that reciprocal key, if this is the negative one up there, I can get 0.5, which is the same thing as one half. So, there you go. Um, giving you, uh, using this key gives the reciprocal of any non-zero number that you've entered into the display. So, examples of trig reciprocals. So we talked about this a little bit the other day when we were introducing the trig ratios. So for example, sine of theta is y over r. Cosecant of theta is r over y. So these are reciprocal identities of each other. So with that in mind, sine of theta is the same thing as 1 over cosecant theta. And cosecant theta is the same thing as 1 over sine theta. Reciprocal identities hold for any angle theta that does not lead to a zero denominator. Remember, you can't have an undefined denominator. So as long as that doesn't happen, then the reciprocal identities hold. So um, these are going to be, these are all the reciprocal identities. You need to memorize them. So 
sine of theta is 1 over cosecant theta, and cosecant theta is 1 over sine theta. Cosine theta is 1 over secant theta, and secant theta is 1 over cosine theta. Tangent theta is 1 over cotangent theta, and cotangent is 1 over tangent. Now, how to use your calculator to find cosecant, secant, and cotangent. If um, some calculators, it depends on what calculators you're using, some calculators have the cosecant, secant, and cotangent on them. My, uh, well, I don't see it right here, but my uh, TI Inspire, it has them. But if your calculator doesn't have them, which the TI-84s do not, then you have to create them. So if you're looking to find cosecant of theta using your calculator, you're going to plug in 1 over sine theta. So for example, if I'm looking for cosecant of, I'm not even sure what the theta, if I'm going to look for cosecant of 72 degrees. Then, first thing I need to do is make sure that my calculator is in degrees, which it probably isn't. It's not. So to make sure it's in degrees, yeah, first hit mode. Arrow down to the third line, change it from radian to degrees. And now if I'm looking for cosecant of 72, I'm going to put in my calcula calculator alpha y equals 1, 1 over sine 72. And that gives me the cosecant. Um, you don't have to use the fraction bar, but if you don't, just remember that you will have to double up on your parentheses. You need to make sure that the entire um, trig function is under the, the um, is under the oh, fraction bar. So let's see, one divided by when I hit sine, it pulls up a parentheses. Oh, I think it'll work. I'll just do one over sine. But when the, when the um, equations get more complicated, it's a whole lot easier if you just use the fraction bar. That way you make sure that you're doing things correctly. Um, caution, be very careful. And, and this would, this happens if like you get in a hurry and you're just not thinking. But be careful not to use sine of negative 1. You can see that right here above sine, cosine, and tangent. That's not the same thing. So that's those aren't the same thing. We'll be using those in a, in a day or two, so you'll see the difference. But just be careful. That's not what you're using when you're trying to find.